there, my HQTs. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, because two is better than one, sometimes. Pete Davidson obviously thinks so. Ariana Who? The comedian has found a fun way to confirm his new relationship with Kate Beckinsale by packing on the PDA in front of thousands of Rangers fans over the weekend. The best part, though, Anthony Porowski's face. The star of Queer Eye has that classic look we can all relate to, third wheel. Get a room, guys. You can afford it. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your overly affectionate presenter at your phone's epicenter. And season two of HQ has ended. Big thanks to everyone who made it such a huge success. Together, you earned billions of points. Now, you won't see any points in this particular game, but season three is just around the corner. We've got some really exciting stuff in store for you, tons of surprises. Now, today, you are playing for $2,500. That's enough to score courtside tickets to any NHL game you like to play a little tonsil hockey, getting some goals. It's time to end the awkward lip locking and focus on the game. There's cash at stake here, people. So let's get to the PDQ, shall we? What's that? Well, this public display of quizzing, of course. So here we go. Let's do it. It's Q1. Which of these animals has horns, goldfish, earthworm, bull? Some of you guys grow horns when you're in the chat. Yeah, I see you. If you went for earthworm, you need to come back down to earth. No bull here, but it is a bull that has the horns, of course. 158,000 of you are charging ahead. You may not have seen a horned goldfish yet, but with all the stuff in the water these days, it's likely coming soon to a pond near you, unfortunately. Q2. Today is Mardi Gras, which means what in French? Mullet Monday, Fat Tuesday, Ash Wednesday. It's a celebration. But well, what are we celebrating? You're celebrating Mullet Monday. You need to cut your hair already and get a calendar bearing it all for the bees. You can have them. It's Fat Tuesday. That's the other name for it, 141,000 of you parading on to the next round. Mardi Gras is a huge celebration in New Orleans today. Les le bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll as we roll on to the next round, staying on topic, Q3. Which president nearly doubled the size of the US through the Louisiana Purchase? Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Andrew Jackson. 13 more states. West of the Mississippi. The Louisiana Purchase cost a mere $15 million back in 1803, but who brokered this deal of a lifetime? The man of the people, Thomas Jefferson, was the man behind it. And you the man, and, and you the, the woman right here, if you tapped on Thomas Jefferson, because, yeah, it wasn't James Madison or Andrew Jackson. 79,000 of you nailed that one. We lost a lot of you there. It was pretty brutal here on Q3. Jefferson bought the land from Napoleon, and thankfully so, because we'd have no Ben yes otherwise tragic q4 which of these can refer to either a variety of coffee or an indonesian island java falkland saram yeah, i forgot to have my daily cuppa of cappuccino a little cranky because of that if you picked falklands you're obviously a tea drinker you don't know your coffee giving you that daily jolt it's java and you got the boost you were looking for if you tapped on Java. Yeah, 77,722 of you did. The island of Java has grown coffee since the 1600s. So much of it, in fact, that it became the nickname for the beverage. Q5. Which of these sports leagues does not currently employ officials designated as umpires? NFL, NBA, NHL. Where won't you find an umpire? Well, we know tennis and baseball have umpires, but apparently a lot of other sports do too, just not this particular one. Skating on thin ice. The NHL does not, just ask Pete Davidson. And that was a savage question here on Q5. Wow, a lot of you thought NBA right there. We lost about 60,000 of you. 22,641 of you got the goal in though. Yeah, who knew basketball and football both have umpires. Obviously, these guys prefer a firm grip on the ground. Q6. Which of these is a brand name for irregular gourmet jelly beans? Has beans, belly flops, sweet jets. Oh, 
pretty creative, cool names for weird shaped jelly beans. Their jelly beans gone very wrong, but they just taste so right. Don't be a has been. It's belly flops. You did not flop on your belly there, 20,000 if you didn't. Belly flops are made by Jelly Belly. They're all shapes, sizes, and colors, probably the rejects from the factory, but we still have an appetite for them because they're yummy. Halfway, Q7. By definition, Flemish people are predominantly from what country? Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium. Also called Flemings. Like Ian Fleming, sort of. Flemish people are from Flanders, but where in the world is that? The Flemish language goes by another name too. Belgian Dutch, because it's Belgium. We were looking for 15,102 of your world's citizens knew that. Flemish people make up about 60% of Belgium, mainly in Flanders, the northern half of the nation. Q8, which of these medical words literally translates to without pain in Greek, anesthetic, antibiotic, analgesic? You gotta bring the pain here on Q8. These guys are all on their A game when it comes to pain. It's gonna cause some discomfort if you got it wrong. It's analgesic. Have you heard of that before? 7,642 if you have. Lost half of you there. Pretty brutal. Analgesics include morphine, paracetamol, and banging your toe against a table leg. Takes away all your other pain every time. Works like a charm. Q9, which song is by a band named for a capital city? Saturday in the park, Amanda, rhythm is gonna get you. The music heads, it's your time to shine here. If you opted for rhythm is gonna get you, it just did, because Gloria Estefan is not a capital city, people. I am gonna take you by surprise and make you realize it's Amanda. All right, what is up with that hair right there? Talking of Mullet Monday, maybe it is. Amanda is the answer we were looking for, 4,198 of you know the name of this game. Boston is not the capital of the US, of course, but it is the capital of Massachusetts. Q10, which is the English translation of a common rule in calculus, the baskets rule, the hospitals rule, the sponges rule, you rule, HQTs, you rule. There's no sponge rule in calculus, of course, but hopefully you soaked up everything your math teacher taught you. It's the hospital's rule that we were looking for. You're ruling the roost, 3,183 if you are. I'm not even gonna try to explain what this rule is because I don't even understand, but it came from mathematician Gilliam Lopital. It's Lopital's rule. But not some bit rounds. Here we go, Q11, which is not a game in the ongoing Tomb Raider series, The Cradle of Life, The Last Revelation, Curse of the Sword. You down with Lara Croft? Let's find out. Three fitting titles, but one of them ain't playing around, making a movie out of it, but not a game starring Angelina Jolie. The Cradle of Life is what we were looking for. That was a tough one right there at Q11. 1,181 of you are moving on though. Cradle of Life actually sounds more like a something out of The Lion King, right? It's time to raid that stash of cash, because we are roaring into the final round with 1,181 players left in the game, another 200 using extra lives to get back in. We've got $2,500 in the bag. Good luck, players, is Q12. The final Star Trek, the original series film, ends with Captain Kirk quoting what author? Arthur Conan Doyle, Shakespeare, J.M. Barry. Trekkies have got this, you Star Wars fans, just take a wild guess. All three get quoted in undiscovered country when Starfleet orders the crew to come home. Captain Kirk throws up the middle finger by setting his own course. Second start of the ride. And straight on till morning. Well, that sounds like Peter Pan to me by J.M. Barry for the win. We've got 469 winners, you smashed it. <laughs> Congratulations to our 469 winners 
today. You made it through a pretty, pretty brutal game there. Look, you're taking home $5.33. That is not bad at all. We've got our, our guy, 18, who's pretty happy about this. We've got Fletch over there, a cosping singer who's singing that song, Amanda, which has been stuck in my head for too long. Uh, Don King, oh, he's playing as well. Looks a little different there without the, the hair. Uh, and Joe Mar B, congrats again, 469 winners today. You came and you totally slayed. Yes, you did, and that's a nice chunk of change that you're taking home as well. Well done. You packed on the PDQ, you really did. You came here and you showed us and you made it. I'm Sharon Carpenter and here's where you can find me. Stop by and say hi, don't be shy. We're back tonight, of course, at 9 p.m. Eastern with more trivia and 9.30 with words. Don't miss that. Also, don't forget, tomorrow, Taylor Swift trivia night. Just shake it off. And Thursday, Golden Girls, you asked for it. We're bringing it to you, Golden Girls trivia is happening on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So be there for all of those games. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.